Hey, with us now, let's bring in professor at Princeton University, Eddie Gloud Jr., and chief national correspondent for the New York Times Magazine, Mark Leibovich, whose latest piece is entitled An Eyesore Becomes an Icon, in which he writes this about the White House fence, quote, it was unclear how long the artifacts would remain there, where they would end up, or whether they would receive some permanent display. But a new consensus appeared to be at hand among the protesters. These signs, flags, and mementos were part of history. They should be preserved and cared for as such as artifacts of a formative moment that was still unfolding. Mark, uh, tell us uh, 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 about what spontaneously happened along that fence? Well, I mean, the fence sort of is surrounding the White House, and it's it was there temporarily. It went down last week, and or the, the fence was removed last week. But I do think that the Lafayette Square area has become a, a kind of hallowed ground of this protest movement, and that will go down and be recalled as an area, I mean, especially around that incident in which, you know, the protesters were forcibly removed when the president had his photo op. Um, where where people will sort of come, and I, I was actually back there last night, and, and it's obviously not an intense protest site that it was before, but you have tourists that are still coming in, or even protesters still coming in, who just want to see the place and want to see what it looks like. Now, um, it's, it's not what it was a week and a half ago, but you've had a lot of people from the Smithsonian looking around at some of the artifacts that are still there, some of the signs that are still um, on other places around <clears throat> the park. And they're trying to preserve it just for, for various Smithsonian museums going forward. So they're basically saying, look, this is part of our history. It will be going forward. And this is a moment worth remembering and also preserving. It, it seems, again, uh, Eddie, whatever Donald Trump has tried to do during this crisis and, of course, the coronavirus, it, it has seemed to politically backfire on him. And the powerful symbols have come out of uh, these these weeks, these months. Uh, but also, we go back to Lafayette Park. We go back to June the 1st. Lafayette Park, it seems to me, will be remembered as the defining moment, not just in the 2020 campaign, perhaps, but perhaps of the Trump presidency. And I commented uh, to a friend this weekend that we're going to be looking back on June 1st for a long time. They're going to be teaching about June 1st at West Point for a long time about what is done and what is not done. And even Donald Trump's relationship with the military has been severely frayed over this. You know, Joe, I think that's right to a certain extent. I mean, what Lafayette Rep Park represented for me at least was the collision of Trump's authoritarian tendencies with this robust tradition of freedom of expression in the country. And we saw that very clearly. Uh, in the public art, I mean, it, I was as I was what as I watched the, the fence wreck, you know, come up, and I saw people react to it, and I saw the art on the fence. It reminded me of how the Berlin Wall became a symbol, a symbol of of oppression, and what was spray painted on the wall when the wall came down. What we saw, in other words, we saw an expression of freedom over and against an expression of authoritarian, or shall we say, unfreedom. And here, uh, in this moment, I think. You're right. It's going to be a representation of this collision of, of a moment where uh, the very norms and precepts that have defined our country were challenged and ordinary people responded in kind. Uh, it's going to be a really important moment in our history, I believe. I think ordinary people responded. The military establishment responded. Uh, the National Guard uh, responded. I mean, it is. It, 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 you're right. In Lafayette Park, there was a collision of Donald Trump's uh, most autocratic impulses, uh, collision course with democratic norms, and we have seen, at least in many instances, the people's voices uh, and uh, military institutions uh, actually stood up and supported constitutional norms over Donald Trump's autocratic tendencies. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.